Hi, it's Ryan from Ryan Fowler Photography and in this video I'm going to be comparing these two cameras, the Canon 6D full frame body compared to the Canon EOS M3. Alright, so let's jump down to a few of the basic statistics. Now, the Canon 6D here has a full frame 20.2 megapixel sensor, whereas this Canon M3 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. So it's not as good in low light, but it still has more resolution in terms of sensor pixels. Now in terms of weight, these two vary quite considerably. The 6D is actually double the weight of what the M3 is, with this coming in at 770 grams or 1.7 pounds for the American watching, or 366 grams in this little compact case at 0.81 pounds. Just some of the basic low light stuff, if you're trying to do any astro, any low light events, wedding, you have to go full frame. It's quite simple. Um, this thing just won't cut it in low light for going up to like 8,000, 10,000 uh, ISO. But this will, it does extremely, extremely well. And even better than the 5Ds in some regards. Now, this one has built-in Wi-Fi, which is great for using the Canon Remote Connect app, as well as controlling the camera through different apps so you can get different apps for time lapse which will then enable this to do time lapse because you can't plug in an external intervalometer into this and it doesn't have a built-in function for it. This one has built-in Wi-Fi and GPS and the GPS is really good for geotagging all your photo locations when you're out maybe traveling or wherever you may be. Both can go up to 30 frames per second at full HD movie recording, which is great. Uh, there's no 60 frames per second options, 120 frames per second options, or 4K videoing, which is a little bit, bit of a shame, but these two weren't brought out at the same time that 4K was really starting to grow in popularity over the last year, 18 months or so. Something that I really do like about this 6D is the silent shutter mode. So this is, it's not obviously silent, you can still hear a click of the shutter, but it is very dulled out compared to what you're normally used to. Whereas the M3, it just has the standard single and continuous shooting. It's pretty basic in some of its menus, including the white balance menu, which doesn't give this a Kelvin scale, which is a bit of a shame because uh, if I was filming with both of these, then it, it's a bit hard to match the white balance perfectly if I can't get Kelvin scale inside of both of them. As you can see, this has got a viewfinder. It's pretty big and bulky, the whole camera, but it has a viewfinder which makes it great for photo photographing. However, this is 100% LCD screen. So everything you see, it's 100% viewfinder coverage, obviously, because it sees what the camera sees, whereas this is only 97%. However, it is nice if you're using the camera for stills to be able to have a viewfinder, which you can buy externally. I think it's about $250. Uh, I haven't got one because uh, I don't really need it. I did buy this camera mainly to do video with. So that's fine by me. Um, but it is still nice if I was going to use uh, lenses like the 70 to 200 you can see back there. You can actually fit that, this lens, the 16 to 35 I'm filming on now, all onto this little body with a simple adapter which is about $140 if, uh, if you wanted to use all of your current lenses from the Canon lineup. Okay, my favorite part about this M3 is the tilting screen. So uh, it goes all the way around, you can adjust it, level it up and down, back to front, however you need to, but it's great to have that adjusting screen, whereas on here, it's completely fixed. So if you're shooting really low, on here you can tilt it up, you can see what's going on without having to crouch or pretty well get on the floor in some instances whereas this you've kind of got to. In terms of focus, this has an 11 point focal system which will focus down to minus three EV, which is pretty dark on the center point of focus. Although it is restricted at 11 points, whereas this is sat on 49 focal points. Now, 
given this was released at a much later date than what this 6D was. But still, in saying that, I think the 6D should have been given a few more focal points, which does give you a little bit of uh, difficulty sometimes in focusing, but most of the time, 6D covers it pretty well with its 11 focal points. In terms of frame rates, this will shoot at 4.2 frames per second and this will be 4.5 frames per second. Now, both of those aren't very high. They are probably the lowest in the Canon range that you can get, uh, which may, means they're not built for sport shooters, quite obviously. So definitely wouldn't recommend these for doing any kind of sports or fast action wildlife stuff. You can still do wildlife, obviously, as long as uh, you're not trying to catch a tiger sprinting because you really won't get that many photos. The ISO in the 60 is expandable down to ISO 50 and up to, I think it's 102,400, uh, which is considerably high, but at shooting at that level, it's just not going to work. Um, this is lowest ISO of 100 and expandable up to 25,600. The processors inside of each of these is a Digic 6 processor in the little brother here and a Digic 5 Plus here. However, the buffer size is much bigger in here at 14 frames, whereas I believe this is only uh, 6 or 7. So you can still get more shots inside of this buffer, which may take a slight amount of time longer to process onto the card, but you will still be able to start shooting fast. So that's pretty much the technical stuff out of the way. The reasons that I actually bought these cameras, this is for mainly stills. It's what I use it for, I'm a full-time photographer, so this is the go-to workhorse and it does an amazing job. The resolution is fantastic, the low light performance is amazing and it is an all-around great professional camera. This I bought for specifically video. Now, videoing, even though it does only do a maximum of 1080p, this uh, is great for videoing, for vlogging. You can um, hold the screen up, attach it to a little monopod. It actually holds we quite well, not perfectly, but quite well on the GoPro three-way uh, clamp. But on the jaw clamp, it holds really firm, which is nice. So you can actually use the jaw GoPro jaw clamp as a small clamp to put this onto a rail or a fence or something if you want to do a time lapse, bit of filming, whatever it may be. But for vlogging, it's great to be able to have this screen up as well. That's the main reasons that I bought them. For recommendations on which to buy, uh, if you're going to be traveling, this is a really good camera. It does, it does do quite well in low light. Like I can take this up to about 3200 quite comfortably. I could shoot Astro, I can do a wide variety of things using this camera, which is really good for the overall uses that it can have. And that means that it can function as a second body as well. Now the 6D, this is a workhorse. You'll love it, it's a brilliant camera. There are rumors of a 6D Mark II coming out, but those are yet to be seen. Um, but in the meantime, this is a brilliant camera if you're looking for an entry-level full-frame DSLR. If you're looking for video, uh, I would definitely go with the M3 as well simply because it does do great autofocus during video as well. It's dead silent and it just works really, really well. But that just depends on what you want to use it for. Anything commercial, definitely go with the big brother here. Hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful with both of these cameras being compared together. Please do give me a thumbs up. If you liked it, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you want to find me on social media, check the links in the description below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.